Essentials of Online Course Design, presented by Group 5. Chapter 4, Visual Design Basics. Online classes should be visually appealing. Books should be as important as the content. Rationales for Good Visual Design. An open, clear, attractive page makes for more effective communication. Presentation of online classes should really involve paying attention to visual layout and organizing cues. Visual Design Online Remember, textual content presented in online classes replaces speaking and is visual. Content needs to be adjusted, reduced, broken up, and illustrated to make it more appealing and interesting to learners. Text that is dense and unrelated images can overwhelm learners and prevent learning. So don't overlook the visual and the aesthetic design. Page layout. Above all else, an online layout must be uncluttered and open with lots of white space on the page. White space between the lines and paragraphs gives the reader a visual break. When using text boxes, Remember, there should be white space all around the text, not just on the top of or the bottom of the text box. Also, remember, when it comes to line length, long lines of text are hard to read. Justification should be always left justified, with ragged margins on the right. And when it comes to the headings and the subheadings, the contrast produced by headlines, subheads, lists, and illustrations gives readers visual entry points where their eyes are then drawn down the page and into the content. Text. Information in its most basic form is easy to draw attention to. When it comes to typefaces, use web safe typefaces that are accessible on almost all computers. Serif typefaces like Georgia and Times New Roman have more detail and form. Sans serif like Arial and Helvetica are easier to read online because they are simpler in form. When it comes to size, type size that is, resolution on the screen is much lower, so use a larger type size, at least 12 point. Bold and italic font, use it sparingly only for emphasis. Underlining should only be used for hyperlinks. Avoid using all caps. Only use caps for acronyms. And when it comes to color, use with care. Contrast is the most important factor in readability. So use color for emphasis, but with care because it can distract. Graphic elements. Symbols and icons are useful in signaling small elements in a website that appear over and over again. They can signal for certain features, activities, audio, video, but they must be consistent throughout the course. Bullets help items stand apart, and numbers are great in identifying sequential steps, ranks, and priorities. Now, when it comes to visual design basics in the online class, Keep paragraphs short and skip a line between each paragraph if needed to increase that white space. Chapter 5, Engaging the Online Learner. Chapter 5, Engaging the Online Learner. When the teacher and learners collaborate in the learning process, online activities are more engaging. Teaching components should be engaging. There are essentially three components of online learning. First, presentation of new knowledge and skills. This is where students are introduced to new topics. Second, activities and resources. These provide students with the opportunity to practice and apply new knowledge and skills. And third, assessment and feedback. This is where the teacher and maybe students can provide feedback on learning. So you might be wondering, what makes online courses active and engaging? First off, they are clearly and attractively put together to interest and engage the learners. 
They're also active and hands-on, so learners learn by doing. They are authentic and meaningful, thus providing learners with real-world situations and applications. They are collaborative and allow learners to cooperate and share viewpoints while thinking critically. They are reflective and encourage learners to self-reflect and assess their learning. And finally, they are responsive to the different learning styles that, and take into account the learning preference of students, whether they prefer to work or learn hands-on, visually, logically, linguistically, and so on. Learning styles. Online classes make it much easier than on-site classes to incorporate a variety of media to address the learning styles of all learners. Again, whether it be visual, logical, musical, they allow for collaboration and active learning, and they meet the needs of interpersonal and kinesthetic learners as well. Roles of participants in an engaged learning process. First, Let's look at the teacher's role. Teachers in an engaged learning online class are engaged in activities along with the learners. They facilitate and guide learners in recognizing and realizing their goals. When it comes to the learners' goals, well, they are active. They're doing things, participating, and they are responsible for their own learning by writing, discussing, asking questions, critiquing, and collaborating. They are not only constructing their own learning, but they contribute to the learning of others. They are also interacting with a class community, the course materials and the resources, the technology, and the real-world situations. Now, learners can interact as a member of a group, so it makes it easier to share viewpoints and perspectives, um, and groups are challenged to think beyond what they understand and know, and they get an opportunity to experience different group roles, like that of a mediator, an organizer, a recorder. When it comes to working in pairs, this allows learners more effective exchanges, and it allows them to reinforce and support each other more efficiently. It's important to also let participants in the class or students work alone. This gives them an opportunity to work on int intrapersonal um, skills, and it gives them the opportunities to work alone and engage with content independently. And finally, it's also important to give students an opportunity to play a role as a member of the community, to engage in class discussions as a way of playing a key role in forming that community and allowing learners to interact and relate to the whole class and the teacher. Collaborative learning. Collaboration supports active and engaged learning. It encourages sharing of information and viewpoints, and it also requires both independent responsibility and cooperation. Now, when planning for collaborative learning, you can group learnings and learners in several ways. First, you can group them heterogeneously. What that means is that you're grouping by differences in skills, knowledge, or backgrounds. You can group students homogeneously. That means you're grouping by similarities in skills, knowledge, backgrounds, or by tasks or topics of interest. You can also group students in jigsaw groups. What this means is that you're grouping them in these cooperative groups where each member is assigned a specific task. Members then check the accuracy of whatever task they're researching by cons consulting with members of other groups that are assign assigned that same task. And then they present their findings to members of their own group. So they go out, compare, verify, and then come back and share with their own group members. And then finally, you can pair students um, in groups of two. You can pair them. And what you can do here is you can allow students to self-select, so choose their partners, or you can go ahead and assign them. This will only work, though, in classes with even number of students enrolled. Preparing for collaboration. 
these are some things that we really need to look out for and make sure that um, we provide for our students when we are expecting them to collaborate. We need to make sure to create a safe and supportive environment. We need to provide clear guidelines and expectations. We need to indicate responsibilities and roles. And we need to make sure that learners evaluate each other's performance when grouping. Again, consider what is most appropriate for the subject being covered and how to group our learners. The teacher's role should also be considered as well, as well as the end product. What is it that we want the outcome of the group work to be?